go. Okay. Recording is started, you guys. All okay. right. And then so this is where we get to pretend we're not on. Correct. We know correct. We actually know. correct. And Facebook is up and going, you guys. Give it a second here. Uh, waiting for the live feed to come through. Trading Rock and roll. The Trading my cup for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this week. Okay, you guys, I see the live feed. Recording live on Facebook. Do you see us? Are we on? Not, no, not? not yet. Not yet. Hold on one second. One second. It takes them so long. <laughs> okay, we, we are live. We are We're live on, on Facebook. Facebook. Okay, ready? Mm, okay, one, two, three. Right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Bricks Cat Unplugged. Notice I got that right the first time. Good job. I'm coming to you live from Valparaiso, Indiana, childhood home of me. Uh, this has been quite a couple of weeks. California, Belgium, Indiana, and then back to California, then back to Belgium, and then to London for Rix's 2018, October 23rd and 24th at the brewery in Shoreditch. This is going to be amazing, guys. We're, we're, we're going full out. We're, we're working 24 by 7 to put together some presentations to show you the future of DWG, drawing-based CAD. In fact, I, you see I, my razor and my, my foamy are here. I haven't even had a chance to shave today. I've been at it since 4 a.m. This is coffee number seven. We I got to switch to water, but it's okay. It is so good. <laughs> Welcome back to the States, Don. <laughs> I wish I had my cup. Man. My cup's back home in the cabinet, uh, along with the silent Dobermans that are guarding my house. So don't get any ideas, you guys. <laughs> okay. I'm but but anyway, uh, you know, we, we, this is number seven, episode number seven. Number seven, correct. And these guys probably don't need any introduction, but I'm going to let them introduce themselves anyway, Matt. Matt Olding with Brixis Learning and Education Department. Awesome. And, and Vince? Vince Amin with sales and somewhat technical, as I've always said. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. Good to be a jack of all trades, and okay. and because that way, you know, making one space, you can always try the other, or you can do both at the same time and not sleep, which is pretty much what Vince does. Um, really, speaking of that, that is correct. Yeah, Vince, maybe it's time for you to introduce our special guest today. Now, this is somebody who's actually been here before. Yeah, but something pretty special in the space of computer aided design software. Correct. So we have our first repeat guest. Um, and I'm glad because I think we didn't get a, to spend enough time with him. There's a clue last time. So we're bringing him back. Uh, as we said before, uh, author, he's written hundreds of articles, blog posts, other things we talked about. Last time we talked about, um, you know, he was uh, author for Catalyst. Uh, also, lots of presentations at some of those other conferences we've been to. Uh, and then we talked about his musical background, which was uh, very fun for us because we got to see that in uh, <laughs> Rock and Paris Roll last <laughs> year. But um, two things I didn't mention last time. Uh, one is that uh, he's published a book that is um, up on Amazon. So you can, if you are looking for the guide to uh, CAD management, it's got the uh, expert CAD management guide that's up there, uh, which has got some great reviews. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to say was he's actually, for Brixis in the U.S., our first certified uh, consultant. So for those folks that are really looking to migrate uh, over, he's, he's uh, definitely done this, and he's an uh, expert in that field. So please, again, welcome Robert Green. Robert Green! Let me, let me bring him in. Yay. There he is. <clears throat> Robert? He's on mute. There he, is. On there he is. is. Robert, how are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm doing great. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Yes, yes we hear great. you good. We hear you really good. Fantastic. So yeah, coming from a stormy Atlanta, since everyone's talking about their home base. Hot yeah. Atlanta, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, Robert, the last, like Vince said, the last time you were here, I felt like 
we didn't really get to interview, you know, about Brixis and Brixcad and, and what you're doing and everything. And so <laughs> we, we had some distractions on the call last yeah, time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, you know, Don and I and Vince have some questions for you and we would like to elaborate. And Vince, do you want to start off? Yeah, I've got a couple. I mean, I think one of the, um, one of the things we hear a lot, and I'm sure you hear this too, is, hey, I'm using a current solution that's working uh, and I'm comfortable, why would I want to change over to something different? You know, what's, what, from your opinion, what would, what would you say to that? Yeah. And we probably know what that other CAD system is, um, that, that, <laughs> that I encounter the most out in the field. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting. I've watched the market evolve on this and, um, basically I think what, what kicks it off is you, you have to achieve savings. You know, mm -hmm. if you're, you're, you're never going to change anything about your business model unless it is giving you a net uh, positive impact financially. So one of the big differences uh, with, with BricsCAD is, is that it is a perpetual licensing model. So once you get over the, the year one expenditure, um, you're, you're really starting to save money. Uh, year two, year three, as you fade back to subscription. And the kind of the easiest way I could describe it is it's, it's the way AutoCAD used to be. Um, three to four years ago is, is pretty much the way that you license the software. So that kind of articulates uh, the savings potential, which would make you want to look at, okay, how difficult is it going to be for me to use this? Because obviously, if, if it's a totally different user experience, there's going to be a lot of training and you know, a lot of user thrashing. Uh, and, and that's just really not the case with BricsCAD. It's, it's a very comfortable, familiar environment. And if you, if, if you can undertake the migration with very few training costs and very little time for users to acclimate, your costs are very low, your payoff is very high, and return on investment is simply savings divided by cost. So, you know, the savings go up, the costs go down. Um, it, it's not an accident that this is happening. It's not an accident that I'm being asked about it. Uh, I think everybody's putting the, the numbers into a spreadsheet and coming to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. So you kind of covered it, but you know, what are the things that people can expect in terms of what's the same, what's different, you know, for those users that step into this, I mean, you sort of covered it a little bit, but can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So, so things like, um, will my template files work? Uh, will my plotter configurations work? Will my plot styles work? Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, it, it, everything really loads in and runs very, very much like, you know, an AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT environment like you would expect. A um, little bit of difference in, in, you know, a few dialog boxes may be a little different. There's a unified properties page that's a little different uh, that, than you would experience in AutoCAD, but it's not, it's not substantially different. It's just, uh, it, it's really quite easy to get acclimated. In fact, my, myself personally and a lot of people I know, the, the way that I drive that tool is, you know, L equals line, E equals erase, Z <laughs> equals zoom. And, it, and if you do that uh, on, on the keyboard, it's exactly the same. You know, yeah. you, you just, you, you won't notice any difference whatsoever. So, you know, I've done some usability stuff with clients so far and just put them in a room and just say, what do you think? And don't give them anything to go on, nothing. <laughs> and just say, okay, you know, I, how does this work? And, uh, and they're working on it straight away. They'll start asking, well, this looks a little different, but they're really, they're getting to work straight away. That's not an exaggeration. You know, one, one, one of the things, Robert, that's, that's really important about that is from, from, from uh, a compatibility point of view, you know, it's, it's, it's fine to be a hundred percent API compatible. In fact, if you're not, then your APIs don't work, which is a problem. So, right. so, our Lisp API is 100% compatible with that other CAD product. Our compiled environment, BRX, is 100% compatible with ARX. And, you know, our, our, the, the command throat of BricsCAD accepts the same command strings and, and the same scripts and the same arguments, and the menu structure is the same. All that's the same, right? The UI is right. going to be different because if we copy the UI of another product, then we're not innovating at all, right? We're just simply right. offering a clone and nobody wants to be a clone, you know, but the point is that you already know 95% of BricsCAD if you know the other products. So why not try yes. it to see what it can do for you? 
Yeah. Well, right. And Robert, uh, you know, we were talking the other day about, okay, I'm a new customer. What's, what's a, what's a plan or a strategy or migrating, you know, over to BricsCAD? Do you have some tips on that? Yes. And I, I think the first thing I'd like to say is migrating over to BricsCAD is, is really not the, the degree of difficulty is probably about the same as, as an upgrade. <laughs> um, so, you know, if, if you were going, let's say from AutoCAD 2016 to 19, you know, you're going to have to make sure that your network folders are set correctly, that you've got your correct printers hooked up, et cetera. And that, that's pretty much what this experience is. So the, the tips I would give the, the client more or less the same that I would give them in any upgrade scenario, know what it is you want to bring over. Um, do, do you have custom menus? Do you have custom toolbars, custom ribbon elements? Where are those? Um, let, let's make sure that we go ahead and bring those over into the CUI editor in, in BricsCAD and get everything correct. Get all of our correct network pointers uh, to plot styles, plot configurations, PMP files, templates, uh, block libraries, tool palettes, those types of things. Um, and I think what, what really pays a great dividend is a lot of times if, if you've been in a CAD tool for decades, um, you, you've just kind of bootstrapped it forward and you just apply the updates and you never clean house. You know, you never look at yeah. what's the optimal way to use yeah. this. You know, you wind up seeing, you know, blocks, Joe's copy of blocks, Joe's copy of blocks two, <laughs> this copy of Joe's blocks, first, you know, all, all that just junk that stacks up in there. This is a... It's a great opportunity to, to search and destroy that kind of stuff and get a nice clean start. Um, BricsCAD runs really, really fast. So if you clean out the garbage and couple that with a, a program that executes really quickly, you get a super clean, fast running environment. And users do notice that. You know, I've never been yelled at because the, the CAD system runs too fast, ever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. I, oh God, Robert, this thing's way too fast. Can we slow it fast. down a little bit, please? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. There's, yeah. there's very few things I know, but I know I won't get yelled at that because mm -hmm. things run quickly. Can we please explode all these blocks just so things <laughs> load slower? I don't know. I mean, oh, sure. I'm going to reach through the internet and strangle that person. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, uh, so taking stuff from like, you know, migrating over like your CUI files and stuff like that, from your experience, you know, basically it's very similar, uh, like the current CAD product that, you know, like everybody else is using. It's, it's not that difficult at all. No, it, it's really not. I mean, it's, uh, it's a matter of pulling in existing CUI files. Uh, it is a matter of making sure that any Lisp customization or, you know, compiled uh, DLLs, things like that, is actually just doing some work on a, uh, a set of custom plugins yesterday, um, as, as the matter of fact. And we were able to just load that stuff straight in and go uh, with, with absolutely zero modifications. Um, so that that's, it's really just not an issue. I will say that if you are a CAD manager and you do a lot of heavy customization, uh, you may find that the CUI editor looks a little different, does. Um, but, you know, if, if you're a programmer kind of person, you're going to be on top of that very quickly. But the important factor is that your users just don't know. They, they, they really have no clue what's going on. It, it just pull down menus work, ribbons work, command line thing works. What, what about work. these? I have a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. do, those, do those come over? <laughs> they do. They do. Okay. They do. Yeah. And you know, even, even, um, and, and it's not just 2d sticks and bricks kind of stuff. It's uh, we, we pulled over a whole lot of, uh, maintenance and installation sheets for things like valves and, you know, electrical cabinets and all that kind of stuff. And just turn on the visual styles, a property box and set it to photorealistic and you're you're viewing 3d stuff just just like you do in in a 3d viewer so mm -hmm. it's um I, I haven't been able to trip it up yet i've had users try but yeah. just haven't been able to trip it up yet that's, well, that's I, good know, I know that robert will keep trying if anybody can blow it up it's robert and and and, <laughs> and so there's two kinds of blowing things up guys and you probably all know this from from everybody that's worked in cad for a while 
There's the person who doesn't know what they're doing, right? And they blow it up. And then there's the person that knows exactly what they're doing. And that's Robert. And it's like, hey, last time I tried this in another product, I had a problem right here. And then I think the beauty is when you do try it in Brickshead, you go, whoa, wait a minute. I just, I just blew right through that place where I had issues in the past. Or I loaded a file. I mean, Steve Johnson says it really well. Every CAD manager should have a current copy of BricsCAD, if for nothing else, to use as a file cleaning tool for their other yeah. CAD products. Because if, if you can't load it in the other CAD product, you can load it into BricsCAD, save it, and it'll probably load into the other CAD product with no issues because BricsCAD has a much more um, thoughtful way of, of looking at the content in a drawing file. And part of that, guys, of course, is due to the fact that the foundation, the underpinnings of BricsCAD's uh, uh, drawing file handling comes from the Open Design Alliance. And, and the fact that we're part of a consortium, a founding member of a consortium of 1,200 companies that are truly focused on DWG compatibility. We're compatible with drawing from R9, think about that, R9, all the way yeah. to 2018. So wow. it's a pretty amazing uh, uh, spread of years of evolution in the drawing file format that we handle cleanly. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I personally had experience with loading a lot of things that were created in, in vertical applications, civil 3D, architectural, you know, 2D mechanic, P and ID, some of those things, and they, they graphically represent very well when they pull up into BricsCAD. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have somebody who's just performing annotation, um, you know, you're not you're not having to worry about having a destructive effect um, on on the data or saving out a, a dumber DWG than you opened. Um, so that's that's yeah, and that's a concern. You know, you you get into compatible products, and it, it is a concern. Um, just haven't seen it here. You know, the the other thing that you really can't ever state is just the graphics performance of it. It's it's quick. You know, it it puts vectors and dots on the screen very quickly, and it, it's noticeable. That's so, good. Again, you know, you're never going to get yelled at because it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. It's, it's, you know, a big part of that is, is the fact that we use Redway 3D as the graphics engine in BricsCAD. And, and you know, there are, uh, we, we're, CAD's hard to multi-thread. Okay, we all know that. And so the fastest CAD product is going to be the product that's running the most efficiently on the CPU with the highest single thread execution score, okay? But there are certain parts of yep. the CAD process, the CAD processes that you can multi-thread and file load and save as one of those and rendering is another one. And we really, I think at Brixis, we do a super good job of leveraging not only your GPUs, but also your multi-threaded uh, uh, CPUs, your CPUs that are capable of running multiple simultaneous threads so we can accelerate those graphics manipulations. I know I use a 3D mouse uh, from 3D Connection and I'm continuously blown away at some of the models that I'm able to just pick up and orbit smoothly in BricsCAD. It's like, I mean, I, it doesn't even seem like it should be possible. I grab that 3D mouse or you don't grab it because if you grab it, it freaks out, but you just, you just move it. And yep. that oh yeah. And it's like it's in, I mean 60 frames per second is beautiful graphics and you don't expect it you expect something kind of chunky and clunky because that's what you've seen in every other product and then you get to BricsCAD and you're like wow how do they do this it's, and super it's nice. magic Belgian sauce and I'm not going to tell you anymore <laughs> about that secret but you'll find out more in the future well, hey, well I wanted to say one quick thing, though. I, I wanted to echo what Robert was saying. It, you know, when you see companies migrating, this is often a great opportunity to clean house. I mean, I can't tell you the number of companies I've gone to where they're like, well, we've had this built up over the last 15, 20 years. We've got 4,000 list files and all these standards. And it's just sometimes it's good to, to just take a deep breath, go in, look at what you're doing and, and take that opportunity to clean up all those things that shouldn't be there or are no longer needed. So I, I really like that example you brought up, Robert. And you know, the the whole way that I tend to look at that is that if, if you clean up garbage and you derive a best practice, you find the one way that you're supposed to actually do things and you make that one way or that best practice part of your migration training, a funny thing happens, you actually teach people the right way to work. Right. 
Yeah. And if, if you teach people the right way to work, they might actually work that way. And, nice. and you, might, <laughs> yeah. you, might, you yeah. might experience lower levels of rework and lower levels of technical support. And that, that really helps you get the most bang for the buck out of your software. I would say that's, that's not unique to BrickScad, but if you're, if you're moving over to BrickScad, you've got a great opportunity to do it. Yes. Why, yeah. Why not, why not do it now and reduce your customization footprint and get everything just more streamlined, more organized, and just in better shape? Why not? It's, good. it's the best time to do it. Yeah. Well, uh, we're running out of time here, Robert. Do you have any closing thoughts? I always run out of time. I know, I know. Yeah. Wow. Time's, a, time's a finite thing. Um, <laughs> yes. You, you know, the, I, I, I've kind of changed my opinion on this, actually, because in, in the past, I've always, always been, you know, research the tool, figure out how you're, you're going to standardize it, and then teach people only in that standardized way so that when you're training, you're, you're training a, a subset, you know, a, a minimal subset of stuff. But what I've seen is when, when you're talking about changing from product X over to BricsCAD, um, people are like, yeah, you're taking away my security blanket here and I might feel a little bit threatened by that. Mm -hmm. And the, the best way that, that I found to deal with that would, in this particular case is just have a laptop party, you know, get, get in a training room or a lunch room or something like that. Um, throw some computers out there that's got BricsCAD on it, invite your power users in, and, just, and don't have any expectations. Say, guys, try this. Just, just pound on it, try to crash it, but what do you see? And in the times that I've done this, it's, it's kind of amazing people just push back with this kind of dumb look on their face going, wow, you know, I, I kind of expected to crash this. <laughs> I, I kind of expected not to like this, or I kind of expected it to be way too different or disruptive, and and it's not. So um, just, just put people on the, put people on it. Yeah. Try it. Here's the other thing that you can do as a CAD manager is that stack of last generation laptops you have stacked up over in the corner mm -hmm. that you haven't yet sent to recycling that may be running Windows 7 or less even. They're totally viable platforms to yeah, load and run BricsCAD on for this, this, this lunch and learn session. And I say lunch and learn, the learning is going to happen automatically. If you bring the pizza, set them down and turn them loose. And I guarantee you, your users will be amazed at what they can achieve in 30 minutes. Now that you're going to have to clean the keyboards because they're going to have cheese all over them. <laughs> that's a small price to pay for that. It's true. Hey, so, not, so, to, Robert, not to mention those old laptops will run uh, versions of Linux really well, which we can also run on. That's right, a multi-platform bricks cab, right? And here's yeah, something yeah. else, guys. Very soon now with V19, uh, all versions of bricks cab will be all languages. And not only that, I'm disclosing futures here a number a month away, but but all versions of bricks cab in the very near future will be able to run in any environment with no geographic limitations. And one more pitch as the sales guy in me comes out. If you're buying new seats of Bricks CAD Classic, Pro, or Platinum today, V18, buy it today, it's enabled for V19. So new seats of Bricks CAD, V18, purchased between now and release of V19, are enabled for 19 keys. So there's no risk to start using Bricks CAD today. How's that? that that's great to know. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. So that's summary, good. let me summarize what Mr. Green has brought to us. Savings without workflow disruption, common configs, high fidelity, highly compatible application, not a lot of relearning. In terms of what you need to do to build a plan, what do you want to migrate, and what do you want to clean up? And guys, let me just say, template files with 17,000 blocks in them probably need to be cleaned up. And Chances lastly, are. this migration process, what does it need to look like? Do you need to plan? Of course you need to plan but it's a simple migration that begins with leveraging your existing files and customizations and thoughtfully working your way back to a clean configuration so you get maximum performance from your new install. Did I do okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Woohoo! I'm hey, going to buy you your book. Is it available on Kindle? No. Oh, man. Okay, I'll buy the hard copy. It's on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy the That's hard right. copy. And I'm, I'm going to read it from cover it's to cover. retro, man. Get, get, the, get the hard copy. Go retro. It's worth it. Okay. okay. There you okay. go.
I will. Yeah. It, oh, Don, one more Only thing. For you, dude. It, we are yes. willing to help you. That's the other thing is we're here to help you. To us? And, yeah, we, oh, yeah, we, we as yeah. a team. We, yeah, we, we're we here to help you. Help you. Yeah. Recognize, you know, Steve Johnson said, you guys, we don't like your help system. We love your product, but your help system's kind of eh. Help.brixis.com. By the way, the guys are integrating the online help system now into the product for V19. There's a lot of work going on in-house right now to get a beta. Uh, and then we're going to be demoing all of the new features of BricsCAD V19 in London, uh, 23, 24 October. If you can be there, be there. If you can't be there, do yourself a favor and try BricsCAD today. Yeah, and with that, you guys, we're going to say goodbye. So for everybody in the audience, download BrickScad, start using it. Like us on Facebook and YouTube. And next week, not too sure what the topic is going to be, but we will be here next Wednesday, okay? Mm -hmm. And Wednesday. with that, you guys, say goodbye. Thanks, Robert, Robert for joining thanks, us. Robert. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, Facebook is off, you guys, and I'm going to hit...